Well, thank you for that question. That question is particularly relevant in the situation with COVID-19 because COVID-19 from the very beginning in the first months of 2020 was what we call a moving target in that we were gaining knowledge every week and every month. And one of the tips or know-hows for decision-making is to always stick with the scientific evidence that you have at a particular time, but always remember that when you are dealing with a moving target, you have to be flexible and modify your decision-making, your guidelines, your recommendations, depending upon the most recent and the most accurate scientific information. As I mentioned, this was particularly problematic during the early months of COVID, because in the very beginning, we thought that the virus was very inefficiently transmitted. We thought it was mostly from an animal to a human and very inefficiently from a human to a human. And it was only after a few weeks that we found it was very easily transmitted from human to human. And then a week or two later, we found out that it was transmitted by aerosol. And then a week or two later, we found out that asymptomatic individuals transmitted it as well as people who had symptoms. So the major bottom line lesson you learn is to keep an open mind, stick with the science, and be flexible as the data change over time. Yes, that is an excellent question. And there are a number of examples of our experience with trials and error in the United States. And I think virtually every country in the world over the whole period of more than three and a half years of COVID have experienced trials and error. Let me give you one example that in the spring of 2021, when we were feeling that we were doing very well because the, the Omicron outbreak that began in the United States in November of 2021, that was way ahead of us. But in January of 2021, we felt that by the time we got to the 4th of July, which was the middle of the year in the beginning of the summer, that since the cases were going down rapidly, we thought that by the time we got to the summer of 2021, we would be free of COVID because we did not realize that COVID had the opportunity and the capability of new variants emerging one after the other. And just as we got to the beginning of the summer, we were hit with Delta. And we had a very, very bad experience with Delta over the summer of 2021. Then when Delta started to go down, again, we thought perhaps we were coming to the end of the outbreak. And then in November of 2021, Omicron came. So the lesson that we learned was that this is a virus that is not going to just disappear. It will live with us forever. What we have to do is learn how to control it and to keep it at low a level as possible because it is the kind of virus that will linger with us, hopefully at a very low level. But it is very unlikely that it will completely disappear. Yeah, this is a real problem because in the United States, I believe it's throughout the world, but I think it's worse in the United States. There's an extraordinary amount of misinformation and disinformation usually spread by social media. And that is really important when you're trying to get a good, solid, sound public health message to the public. When you have the spread of misinformation and disinformation, 
it becomes very, very difficult. We are really struggling with that in the United States because we have a strong anti-vax movement. We have an anti-science movement. Scientists like myself are being attacked on social media because we're asking people to get vaccinated. That is a very, very difficult problem. So there really is not a very good answer, Jang, to your question about how do we overcome that challenge of getting communication because we are constantly battling with a sea of misinformation and disinformation, particularly generated through the social media.